motherfuckers. It's uh, Mad Warrior again. Second installment of this video. Uh, the making of Pathless Land. So, here you go. So we're going to begin with the musical segment of this series, I guess. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm kind of frazzled from a bike ride, so just have to bear with me here. And we're going to talk about that. Well, the first song I know already, I'm just getting a list of my songs because I always forget. No, I'm just kidding. It's not for that. <laughs> no. <clears throat> so the first song is actually an intro, which will be the first song before Chalice of Fate. And that song basically is a very old song, Chalice of Fate, as well as the intro. But it's more classical, you know, classical song, you know, whatever you want to call it, I guess. Pseudo-classical, I don't know. So, at least the intro is. And I always wanted it to be kind of orchestrated, so I added some orchestral backing, thanks to Garrison Personal Orchestra, of course. So that leads into Chalice of Fate, which I actually already accidentally talked about in the last video as far as the music goes. But I wanted to add a side note that it's the last harmonies in the song are very influenced by X Japan. <laughs> Controversial band, I know, but I'll admit that is an influence on that last part of the song. So that leads us to the second song, which I, I'm not doing the track listing in order necessarily here, but we'll figure it out as we go along. So, second song's End Times, and that, of course, is the first song I recorded for this project. Uh, probably late 2010, November of 2010. And a lot of the files got lost, uh, some of the waves and stuff, so I'm not redoing it at this point. So I didn't want to go through and program the drums again, which was a bitch, I'll tell you. So, I'm leaving the song the way it is. Um, it's melodic death metal. I guess mixed with progressive metal of some sort. I guess maybe like, I don't listen to Scar Symmetry, but you know, some of the bands like that or Soil Work or, you know, whatever <coughs> could be compared to. I wanted the last part to be kind of like Arsis or Necrophagus, but <coughs> it was kind of a more eh, haphazard version of that, I guess you'd say, you know, with the drums and shit. So, but I don't know, it's kind of influenced by a lot of different stuff. It was the first riff I wrote out of my last band, and I actually was very pissed off when I wrote the riff. I actually wrote the riff in the summer of 2010, and then I later recorded it. The riff was kind of like I was trying to be the more, most complex thing possible with one riff and, or something like that. I don't know. And then it just turned into that. But it's pretty cool. Some people say it reminds them of Meshuggah. I don't know if I agree with that, but some of the riffs and stuff, but I like it. So and then it leads to Summer Winds. Summer Winds, of course, is a MIDI Warlord cover, <coughs> which my friend uh, gave me full permission to record. I wanted it to kind of have almost like a second album of Moonspell kind of feel to it. Wolfheart being that album, you know, kind of like that first song. I don't know if it's going to turn out like that, but I'm still working on that too because it's not done, nevertheless. But it's almost done. So Addicted to War, very influenced by necrophagist martyr oh martyr shit um arsis kind of shit like that you know it's technical death metal but kind of throw it into like a carcass kind of hypocrisy thing you know, more straightforward in a certain way but you know i want to make it as make it not too technical but pretty cool nevertheless i'm not going to use any clean vocals in the song i don't think i'll just do my death metal black metal growl i guess they call it scream now but i always thought scream meant like high vocals like Rob Halford, but fucking kids today are so fucking confused. It screams now. Well, fuck you. Anyways, that's just like the core kids, but which I like actually about 10% of that stuff, like between the Barry and Mean shit, I do like it. I admit, I won't lie. So that leads us to Into Your Pain. I think I'm just going for the same list as I did before. Into Your Pain. I was a lot of Pink Floyd the Wall at the time. I just got it gone through a breakup and it was pretty fucking wanted to make the most depressing song I could ever make. I guess you could almost say Sabotage is a little bit of an influence on some of the vocal parts. Like, you know, even like Paul Diano from Iron Maiden, like some of his vocals or people say Hatfield, but whatever. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. 
I like I like the the yell. My favorite part is the why'd you have to walk away because I recorded like six different vocal harmonies for that. It's definitely an unfinished song. I'm gonna release it the way it is. I just don't give a shit. I'm I can't record any more of that song. It took a long a long time to record a lot of those vocals and stuff, and I don't really consider myself the best vocalist, so I I'm just releasing it the way it is right now and not doing any more work. But the guitar solo at the end is my fucking absolute masterpiece of guitar playing in my my opinion and the best of Michael Shank or Adrian Smith and David Gilmore rolled into one for I'm not saying trying to say I sound like that, but I'm just trying to say like that was kind of influenced that. And then Wings of Indication of course is like another Halloween, Blind Guardian, Gamma Ray, whatever song may turn into something else maybe a little bit of symphony x i want to throw in a little something in there still working on that song there's basically three songs i have to finish two songs i have hardly started i have the drums for some of them but and then prometheus arisen uh <clears throat> i don't know i'm almost i mean i basically use drum loops for that and i threw them together <clears throat> i guess you'd say dream theater or even like some doom metal for that and some ELP or something, I don't know. Just some weird shit I want to throw in there. John Teeter 2036, I think it's pretty obvious. The drum loop just reminded me so much of the Black Album. I admit, and I'm not really a huge fan of that album as much as the earlier stuff, but, you know, Metallica's an obvious influence on that. I wasn't really on purpose, per se. It just kind of turned out that way. Plus, maybe hypocrisy with their keyboard stylings and some of the space rock kind of stuff, you know. Maybe even Devin Townsend or some shit. I don't know. Just like I like a lot of synthesizer shit. Uh, TQJ is definitely a Pink Floyd fucking shit. I don't know. Ho uh, Porcupine Tree, Hawkwind. I don't know. Fuck. Just some weird shit. Maybe even the band Zombie, who was kind of a band. They did the what the hell is that band called? They did the. Uh, soundtracks to uh, Dario Argento's movies. I forgot the group, but not zo Zombie is the band that's kind of in tribute to them, but there's another band and I can't even recall the name. And I, I always liked that Zombie album and I should have should have checked out the band before that. But that was kind of just kind of a weird synthesizer thing, 70s, whatever thing. That's about it. That wraps it, <coughs> wraps it up. So. Let me see how long this video is. Hopefully, I don't think it's as long as I thought. Oh, it's only eight to seven minutes, so I'm gonna do a uh, gear video and software video, probably rolled into one, and then I'll do a uh, finally the future of Pathless Land after that. But this is it for this video, and I'll see you fuckers later. <laughs>